We're going to be posing and shaping hair in this tutorial, but some of the techniques that we're going to be using are applicable in many different circumstances. So even if you're not looking for help specifically for hair, it's a good idea to know these techniques. I have Knot's Curl loaded into my scene and I have the Bridget Hair applied to her. The Bridget Hair is a great product. You can see in these pigtails that it has many different bones and the more bones you have, the easier it is to pose the item. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of iRay and switch to my perspective view. And you can see how many bones this actually has in the pigtails. And with Bridget hair selected, let's come into our shaping pane. And you can see all the adjustments that can be made. You can adjust the hairline or a number of different things. You can also come into posing or your parameters tab and click on pose controls and you can dial up different poses. You can even come over to poses in your smart content, select Bridget hair and there are a whole bunch of pre-made poses for the hair. But I want to pose this myself so I'm just going to come into posing right click on the tab go to zero and zero figure pose so I'm gonna go ahead and pose this using the active pose tool and I'm gonna just go ahead and start posing this so I'm just gonna go ahead and speed this up here So I'm liking this pose, it looks pretty cool. If you're wondering about this shoulder right here, I purposefully brought the hair through this shoulder so I can go over one more technique. Especially if you have an older item, not every product is going to have this many bones or points of articulation. So if you do end up with something like this and you just can't fix it with posing, let's go ahead and create a deformer. So let's select the Bridget hair Come up to create new deformer. I'm just going to leave that. So selecting the base, you're going to see this weight map. So the more red these vertices are, the more it's going to be affected by the deformer. And yellow means it's going to be less affected. So here's the base. Under that is the actual deformer and this is the field. So the base of the deformer is in here and what I want to do switch back to the universal tool and I want to move this right into this shoulder so this is the base point where the effect is going to be taking place so I want it to be bulging out right here so I'm gonna put it right under the shoulder the field you can see this bounding box that is where the gradient is set up this weight map but you can see as you move it around this is actually based off of the zero pose of the hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this all the way off of the hair and I'm going to create a weight map by going up to tools, selecting node weight map brush, and then I'm going to go to the tool settings and if you don't have this pane docked you can just hit right here that's going to bring up your tool settings then what we're going to do is add a map. And from this point we can actually paint on weight onto that hair. Let's make sure that this painter tool is selected and we can go in and start painting on weight. And if we switch to, let's switch to this draw style and we can go in. So you want all this area red and the blue areas are not going to be affected as much. Or another way you can do this is switch to these spheres and you can see this red sphere and this yellow sphere. The red sphere is going to indicate everything within that sphere is going to be at a hundred percent weight and it's going to be a soft gradient out to zero percent at the edge of this yellow sphere. So I'm going to bring the yellow sphere up to right here. And 
When we have these where we want, let's just hit apply gradient right here. And that's going to apply that gradient to the hair. And then I'm going to come to the deformer right here. And I'm going to switch back to my universal tool so I can see that better. And I'm going to switch back to texture shaded. So let's go to our parameters and with the deformer selected, I'm going to just move the scale up. And that's going to push that out. Maybe I can try pushing up the Z rotation. So basically anything you do to the deformer is going to be affecting all this field right in here. So we're not going to get this perfect, but one last thing we can do, and I'm just going to hide the deformer. One last thing we can do is select the Bridget hair and we're going to apply some smoothing. So come under general and it doesn't have smoothing here. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the scene tab in the scene pane right here. And we're going to go to edit geometry and apply smoothing modifier. So let's go back under general and you're going to see mesh smoothing right here. So what we're going to do, we're going to change the collision item from Natsuko to the sweater. Because that is what it's currently colliding with. Except, and we're going to push up the collision iterations to, let's say, 20. And the higher this is, the longer it's going to take to calculate this. That looked like it didn't take too long. And it's pulled all this outside of the geometry of the sweater. So let's go back to our first position. And that looks pretty good. So let's see what it looks like with our eye ray. But anyways, like I said, this is a really great product because it has so many points of articulation and it comes with so many built-in options. You can see right here where we did use the deformer. It does crush down the geometry a little bit. So I would end up not using a deformer on this particular item. But say you have an article of clothing or something else that's not working exactly how you want it to, a deformer can be a great solution.